Okay, so I'm here with uh, Don Liberatori. Uh, he's a long-time pilot of the Johnson Sealing. And uh, Don, can you tell us a little bit about the sub and how you came to be working with it? Sure. Uh, okay, well, let's start with how I got to working here. I trained as a commercial diver. And uh, while I was doing this, this was back in uh, the early 70s, uh, we were training at a dock facility using the old hard hat equipment, copper helmets, 40 pounds of weights and everything. And uh, just when we were there that day, the uh, Harbor Branch ship pulled up and had one of the submersibles on the back of the ship. Now back at that time, the, the submersible was actually what they call a lockout submersible. So divers could exit the vehicle from the back chamber with a helmet and a hose and everything. And, uh, and I, I, we looked up and all of us at the dock just went, oh man, is that cool or what? That's where we want to go, you know. So after I went through my training, I just so happened a job opened up here at Harbor Branch and that's when I started as a diver right here on this sub. That was 1977. And uh, I was doing lockout dives. We had a decompression facility also that the submarine would made up to. And we could transfer from the sub down into the big decompression chamber that was down below the deck of the ship. Uh, and basically that, that's how I started my career. So After it really, a couple it, of years I was uh, asked to become a pilot and I trained for that. Then, yeah. So it really started out as a dive support started, kind of at, that's absolutely tool. Right. Now these days it's more of an exploratory tool that's of its right. own right. We discontinued that what we call lockout diving or the wet diving from the submersible back in the late 80s for a lot of different reasons. We got rid of the decompression chamber, we sold that ship, and also we started going deeper. Originally these subs were only designed to go to a thousand feet and the lockout system was good to about 600 feet. We could get out of the sub down to that depth. Little by little, we increased the depth rating by changing equipment, new designs and new equipment, and we got down to 3,000 feet. So the science community that we were working with at the time uh, wasn't interested in the shallow end too much. They all wanted to go deeper. So little by little, it became an obsolete system nobody wanted to use, and we decided not to support it, save a little bit of money by not refurbishing that equipment and training everybody in those procedures. So uh, eventually it became what it is today. It's a one atmosphere sub, both chambers are at surface pressure, you never pressurize the compartments at all. You can open the hatch and get out on the deck of the ship at any time. No decompression involved, no special gases involved, so uh, that's the way it is right now. Yeah. Terrific. Now, this vehicle is Johnson Sea Lake number two. She was uh, uh, commissioned in 1975. Sub one was actually commissioned in 1971. So the vehicles have been around a long time. Uh, we've got um, this vehicle has a little over 3,800 dives, and Sub One has 46 and change, 4,600. Uh, then we had a third sub, which you guys are aware of, is at the uh, Georgia Aquarium, or was on display. Uh, and about 600 dives on that, so we got well over 9,000 dives in our uh, repertoire of uh, you know 30 some odd years of, of diving for science. That's fantastic. 